My name is Anthony, and I'll be drawing for you. Hey, planet Earth, we meet again. Welcome to Anthony Draws For You, the channel where no idea is too crazy. Today's idea is pretty messed up. To bring you up to speed in case you're new to the channel, here's what I'm working on right now. So this commission has eight characters total, and what my client asked for was, you guessed it, zombie Disney princesses. Uh, a lot of blood and sweat going into this, mostly blood. So here's who's on the chopping block today. Tonight's victims are Snow White and Sleeping Beauty. Okay, hashtag desktop confessional of the day. I didn't actually write anything on here. It was just a prank, bro. So um, so yeah, there's eight characters total in this whole commission, and I've done four of them so far, and we got four more to go. If you haven't seen the first two videos in the series, please click the link in the description below. Before we can continue, I need two clicks from your mouse. One goes on the like button, and one goes on the subscribe button. Push my buttons. All right, Sleeping Beauty, wake your ass up because you're about to be a zombie. <laughs> You know, I never thought I'd say this, but in doing all of these princess drawings, looking back through the pages of pop culture history, I'm starting to be more and more fascinated by just little things that I'm noticing. I mean, just to look at the reflection of the times kind of thing. Like one of the biggest things that I noticed was the way that they drew the female lead and how their strategy has sort of changed over the years. Because if you compare the character design between Sleeping Beauty and say the one that came before her, Cinderella, it was a difference of a couple of years, but look at the drastic change in the style. Now that's not to say that the style of exaggeration was started by this movie. No, 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 no. I mean, look at the Seven Dwarves. That's cartoon exaggeration. Look at the mice in Cinderella. That is cartoon exaggeration. Sleeping Beauty marked a turning point. Prior to this, it's almost as if, like, cartoon exaggeration was not meant for the female lead. It was almost like the element of the divine had to be there. The ideal woman being, like, super pure and angelic. Cinderella's art style, very proper. Sleeping Beauty, very expressive. I mean, whatever happened in the time span between Cinderella and Sleeping Beauty, if you look at the if you look at their two faces side by side, you tell me. Like you could sort of see their standards um, not lowering, but loosening, if that makes any sense. And I think it's just so interesting how you can sort of see that in the animation style. Yeah, the creative team from Sleeping Beauty, I'll I'll bet anything that most of them listen to a lot of Coltrane and uh, Miles Davis. I bet you any amount of money. Um, so anyway, this scene that I'm drawing is from what I consider to be one of Disney's creepiest sequences. This is the part where Aurora, that's actually her name, her name isn't actually Beauty or Sleeping. No, that's just her occupation. I can't put my finger on it. I don't know if it's because of the, the color palette and how saturated and green everything is, but when that girl like stands up and she's just got that look like dead ahead, like no expression, like eyes wide from top to bottom, and she's just following this thing up the stairs. And even the sound effects, like the reverb and the echoing, they just do such a great job of really putting the viewer in that moment. I just saw this in a YouTube clip somewhere uh, when I was doing research and looking for references for the artwork. I, I came across this clip and I just thought, oh my God, how many young girls were given friggin' nightmares from this one walking sequence alone? Alright, now it's Snow White's turn. Alright, so Snow White, scenario goes like this. She's a princess, father's the king, he's on wife number two. Married to the Disney equivalent of Grandma Kardashian, always looking into the mirror for life's answers. 
Father dies before the opening credits. Cinderella gets stuck living with the wicked stepmother. <laughs> that's... Sorry, that's a lie. Um, no, Snow White gets stuck. <laughs> Snow White gets stuck living with the the wicked stepmother. <laughs> How easily manipulated were these kings in all these stories? They all lose their first wives, and then they all get remarried to these complete psychos on the rebound, and then they die allegedly of natural causes, leaving the poor girl trapped in the house with Cersei Lannister running the show. So, what exactly was going through the king's head when he and the second wife first started dating? Did he see her check in the mirror every five minutes and go, "You know something? I like this one." I like how she doesn't care about anyone but herself. I like how she's always just sort of sitting around. I don't get the feeling like she's gonna make me do too many things. That's it, I'm in love. Here's all my stuff, you total stranger who my daughter clearly does not trust or like. So anyway, for years, the queen is the fairest of them all. She's the hottest slice of pizza around, so says her talking mirror that nobody else has ever seen. Which brings me to my crazy analysis. There is no magic mirror. It's all a hallucination and the Wicked Queen is only talking to herself and she marinates and stews in her own pain and negativity and obsesses over the only thing that she seems to think gives her any value, her physical attractiveness. Physical appearances cannot support the weight of life's burdens because her whole life she's neglected to cultivate an identity for herself. Those selfies can make you feel better for a hot second, but it's not going to help you carry life's weights. No, for that you need to have virtue and a solidified sense of self-identity and authentic confidence in one's own abilities. No, she doesn't have any of that, because she's a vain prick. So the queen is beginning to age more rapidly. The voices in her head are spinning, and they're saying, Oh, hey, queen, you better watch out. This girl is going to smoke you in the beauty Olympics. So the queen does what any sane, balanced, well-adjusted gold digger would do. She hires a hitman. Yes, a hitman. Huntsmen hunt animals. This is a teenage girl we're talking about, so we'll call him what he is. A hitman. And not a very good one at that, because Snow White survives and goes on to Act 2, where she moves in with seven strange men she finds in the middle of the woods. <laughs> Yeah, anyway, it's not long before Kris Jenner comes back to give Snow White the poison apple and finish the job that the Huntsman was supposed to carry out. But see, here's the thing. This poison apple is only sorta kinda poison. It must be the same poison that Maleficent put on that spindle that made Sleeping Beauty go into that same half-sleep, half-death paralysis because it's the same, bam, plot. Just once, they should have the prince, like, on his way to kiss the sleeping princess and break whatever the curse is. But then, like, an EMT dwarf, like, bursts in the door saying, No! You're supposed to do compressions! This isn't a makeout session! We're trying to revive her, you idiot! <laughs> Regarding the artwork, though, this one gave me some very much needed practice in drawing blood and liquids. This one is a little bit different from the others in the series in that it's at a downward angle and the blood is not being sprayed or splashed. It's just sort of pooling out from the center. For me, um, liquids, in this case blood in particular, is one of those things that I just, I need to master. My manager Susan actually pointed this out to me and she said, there's some things that you draw really well and then there's other things that look like you really don't like drawing them. And uh, yeah, no, that basically is it. That's liquids for me. Um, it's mostly at the coloring segment. Yeah, it's, it's just something that I need to work on. Um, but this piece gave me a lot of opportunity to shake the dust off and focus on working on that particular skill a little extra. Because in addition to cartoons, I also do a lot of other types of artwork. I do work for clients who need graphics for commercial purposes. I do restaurant menus, social media banners, um, artwork that acts as accompaniment to uh, slideshow presentations. Name your surface, I'll draw on it. And whether it's liquids or blood, zombies, princesses, no matter what, I'm pursuing very diverse work and I want to be ready to draw anything at any time. Tell me what you're working on right now in the comments section below. Share this video with your friends. Don't forget to pound that like button.
be sure to subscribe to keep the party going. Thank you much, and I'll see you next time.